Okay, we're going to talk about the unit circle. A unit circle is a circle that's got the center at zero, zero, and it has a radius of one. The formula for it is this. You might have recognized it from, from pre-calculus. And radius is one, so x squared plus y squared equals r squared is your formula. We have a one that's here. So the reason why we're talking about a unit circle is because our six trig functions that are listed here, all these actually come off of the unit circle and you could uh, look at the special relationship. Well, now what a trig function is, it's a function that relates the angle that you have to a side of a triangle. So in this case, I have drawn an angle that's measured from the positive x-axis, that's my angle T right there. It's measured and it it's, it's goes to a certain spot on the unit circle, so when I go at that angle at T, it's going to hit the circle at this point right here in x, y. So that forms this triangle. I have an x, that's my x coordinate, the y coordinate. Now because we're talking about a unit circle, the radius is 1, that means that this longest side of the triangle, the hypotenuse, that's going to be equal to 1. So because I have this, uh, it allows me to write definitions based off of the, uh, the unit circle here. So sine t is defined as y. Now sine and cosine, these are functions that you have on your calculator. So if you put in whatever angle this happens to be and you punch it into the calculator and hit the sine button, that will give you the actual height of that triangle right there. So all the values that you get off your calculator, all of them come off of the unit circle. So when your calculator gives you an answer, realize it's actually a value coming off the unit circle when you have that. So sine t is equal to y. This one is called cosecant t. So cosecant t, that's the reciprocal of y. So 1 over y we have for that one. Cosine is defined as x. So cosine will always give you the x coordinate of your triangle there. And again, the t it just represents an angle that you're going to be putting in. So you put in an angle, you hit cosine, gives you the x value of that particular triangle. The reciprocal of it would be secant. So secant t is always 1 over x. Tangent. Tangent is the ratio of the, the y value over the x value. So y over x, that would represent tangent of that theta. And then we have cotangent t, which is x over y. Uh, so that one right there would be the reciprocal of tangent. So again, all these six trig functions come off of the unit circle. So now that we've talked about the definitions, now we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. Okay, so they're telling us that a point on the unit circle is negative 5 and 13 and negative 12 13. So we want to find uh, all six trig values. So we just talked about and had on the board all the different definitions for sine, cosine, and so forth. We want to use this point in order to find those. So you want to refer back to those in the notes or you can uh, reverse the video, rewind it, and watch that again, that explanation of it. They have those formulas down. We need to know those formulas in order to answer this question. Now the point that they give us here, this is actually given to us as a coordinate, which means we know it's going to be x and y. Because it's x and y, automatically we're going to know two of our trig functions. Referring back to the notes that we had before, one definition says if we want to find sine of t, sine of t is equal to the y value. The y value is, we're going to use the one directly from the point that was given, so automatically if they want to know the value of sine t, it's going to be negative 12 13 This would actually be your answer. We're not, notice we're not finding the value of t. You don't need to know the, uh, the angle on that. All you're, you, they want is the, that, the value of that, the, sine, the value for sine of t. That would just be negative 12 over 13. We got that directly from our point. That's, the, that's y. Next one is cosine t. Okay, so cosine t is the x value according to our definitions. So this is going to be negative 5 thirteenths. Next, we want to find tangent. Now tangent t is equal to the y value over the x value. We have both of those two. y value, negative 12 thirteenths, over the x value, negative 5 thirteenths. Because we have a fraction over a fraction, we have to take the top fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom one. So that's going to be 13 over negative 5. The 13's are going to cancel, the negatives cancel, and we're going to get 12 fifths. So 12 fifths would be tangent. Now that we have these, we want to answer the, the other ones. 
So this one we have cosecant T, we're going to find X. Now cosecant and sine, those are related to each other. This one was the Y value, but this one is 1 over Y. Now if I take 1 over negative 12 13, so I'm basically just going to get the reciprocal. So the easiest way to do this is just all you're going to do is flip the fraction around for this. So the cosecant is going to be equal to negative 12 13, reciprocal of the original one. Next, cosine. Cosine is a, uh, goes, the reciprocal of that would be secant. So we have negative 5 13, secant is going to be negative 13 over 5. So again, these are reciprocals of each other. So sine and cosecant are reciprocals, cosine and secant, those are going to be reciprocals of each other. Finally, we have the cotangent t. So cotangent t would be the reciprocal of tangent. So this is going to be 5 twelfths. So that would be the exact value, the trig value that they're actually looking for. And so again, for these, you usually want to leave your answer in a fraction form. You don't want to change them into a decimal, but that would be the, the value. That's all the six trig values that we found. Okay, we want to use your calculator to answer these two questions. So we've already talked about now the definitions for the trig functions, and so now we're going to do a couple examples with this. So to do cosine 14, okay, this means that when your t value is 14, so I'm going to go ahead and illustrate this with the unit circle we worked with before, that's 14 degrees. The cosine, from our definitions we just talked about, that says that we're actually looking for the x value. So I want to find out if this is 14 degrees right here, then what is the length of this side? of the triangle. So 14 of course would be drawn probably way down here in actuality. It's a pretty small angle but in this case we're just visualizing what that actually means off of our unit circle. So our calculator, when I put cosine 14 in the calculator, that's going to give me the x value right here. So in order to do this you have to make sure your calculator is in degree mode. All calculators you'll have an ability to go back and forth between degrees and radians. So you want your calculator to be in degree mode. If you have a graphing calculator, you're going to have to go into the mode button, hit mode, and then when you go in there, you'll see things that are highlighted. So the things that are highlighted in black are which mode it's in. So if you want it to be in degree mode, you'll have to make sure that degree mode is actually highlighted. So if it's not, move the cursor over, hit enter, and it'll move it over to the degree. On other uh, scientific calculators, you should see a DRG button somewhere on, on there, or it should say DEG or RAD, that'll let you know what mode your calculator is actually in. So if you put this into the calculator, cosine 14, and uh, let's say we just round it to two places. So if we round it to two places, you should get 0.97 uh, for that one. That means that this value right here would be 0.97, that's where that would be off of your, that would be on the triangle. So that means that that's how far it is from here to here. So again, that value came directly off of the unit circle and that's how we got that 0.97. Now we're going to do sine of pi over 8. Now to do this one, your calculator needs to be in radian mode. So again, you want to make sure your radians is highlighted if you have a graphing calculator or make sure you have an RAD or an R at the top of your scientific calculator and you'll put this in. You're going to get 0.38. So what that means is if I put this angle in here, so I'm going to put pi divided by 8, pi divided by 8 is our angle, that means that the y value here, that's how high this would be, this would be 0.38. That's what that means when we do this in the calculator. Sine is the y value, you get that value directly off of the uh, triangle. Now here's something to keep in mind too when you do problems. Let's suppose I have sine of 2 and I have sine of 2 with a circle above it. Now it looks like you may have exactly the same thing but these things both mean exact uh, two different things actually. If you have a little circle on top that indicates that you actually have a degree so you'd be using degrees in your calculator to find the value here. You'd be doing sine of 2 degrees. Now if you just have 2 without the circle on top, then it's assumed automatically that you're going to be in radian mode. So I want to stress that you don't have to always have a pi uh, in your answer in order for it to be a radian. So 
the main, the main thing is you don't see a little degree sign above it. If you don't see a degree sign above it, that means it's not an actual degree. It's in radian mode. So I want to make that clear that you don't have to always have a pi uh, for that one.